Hello, world. Welcome to another week of Golf Subpar. Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. And Sleaze, I think it's safe to say we're both playing a little hurt today. But uh, I left it all out on the field. I'll say that. <laughs> it's my debut. I wanted to give it all heart all the time, and I feel like I did that. You could probably hear it in the voice. It's not ideal, but uh, left it all out there, played to the whistle, whatever other sports cliches you can throw at it. I gave it I gave it 100 yep. at waste, all times. Waste management, Phoenix Open Week takes takes it all out of us. Our guest this week. Billy Ho, Billy Horschel, he is all over the place. I love the guy. Has a lot of energy. Likes to talk, just like we do. Kind of had to mute his microphone a couple times, being like, hey, this is our show. <laughs> He's a, I love when we get these guys on that want to go, man. You give them a question, and you get, you get all the answers. You get all the stuff. Billy, uh, super nice to come. And that's one of the cool things about this week is a lot of guys are in town. The hard part is squeezing in as many as we can uh, with their schedule and with ours, too. But Billy coming in. Talking about a little FedEx Cup, a variety of different things. Billy, all time coming on here. He's great. Let's get to it. Here's Billy Horschel on Golf Subpar. All right, ladies and gents, we have a large guest with us today. He is Florida Gator legend, five-time PGA Tour winner, and also a winner of a little event we in the biz like to call the FedEx Cup. He is Billy Horschel. Welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this, sleeves, but... To be to be honest, we might have a problem because I know this is a podcast and we're supposed to talk, but you and I like to talk a lot. This man ain't scared of the microphone. We might have to turn his off at some point so the people can hear us every once in a while. I've been known to talk a little bit once. In a while. I that's like a, it. That's yeah. okay with me. Yeah, you know what I mean. I I'm happy it. to just tap out for a little bit. And let Billy go. <laughs> yeah, just take over. Let Billy Ho go. Golf sub par with Billy Horschel. You mm-hmm. get me on the right subject. It could go on for several hours. What well, subject would you like? We can I'm offer not gonna a variety. Say, I'm not going to say <laughs> there's many subjects I, I could go on for hours and not even be interrupted once. All right. Well, let's go I back like to that. some of those younger years and start off and see where this thing goes. But you, you grew up in Grant, Florida. You weren't very highly recruited coming out, of, coming out of high school, but you found yourself at the University of Florida with Coach Buddy Alexander. Take us through some college years. I mean, three-time first-team All-American. And I know you and Coach Alexander are very, very close. He's meant a lot to you. Yeah, he was uh... – he was a big, important part of my um, journey to the PJ Tour, how I became, you know, the player I am today or uh, got to the player I am today. Um, you know, growing up in Grant, Florida, I was a good player. I was a good junior player. Wasn't, I mean, I guess in the state of Florida, you know, there's a lot of good players in the state of Florida. And my buddies in my class were better than me. And, you know, they were going to UCFs, FSUs, uh, the, you know, USF and um, – I, I didn't have a scholarship. I had a scholarship to the community college where I lived at Bavard Community College, which was a very good junior college, one of the best golf programs. And somehow buddies watched me play nine holes of a practice round at our state um, finals for high school golf uh, in November. We had talked a little bit before then, watched me play nine holes, and then talked to him the following week, and he offered me a scollarship, which was a book scholarship. I mean, it's $400. Yeah. It's yeah. not a lot of money at all. Um, and there was a little discussion with my parents cause we didn't, we didn't have much money. It was going to cost a lot of money to go to university of Florida. And so there was a little bit of discussion. I cried cause I thought my parents were trying to stop me from going to the university of Florida. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I literally cried yeah. and I yelled at my parents. Um, but, uh, you know, they just had, a, we had to figure out the finances. Thankfully I was, I was a good academic student. So my education could be paid for. Um, through our bright futures and and I took the journey up to Gainesville and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life I wouldn't be here if I was not uh, in Gainesville learning from Buddy Alexander playing alongside Matt Every. <laughs> yeah okay first off That's you a played good alongside him you didn't learn anything from Matt Every. <laughs> I, I learned I learned how to gamble very well <laughs> I learned how to throw clubs very well um, I probably learned some bad things from him um, I learned some good things as well but uh, you know, there was when I came in, there was James Vargas, Brett Stegmaier, Matt Every, guys that were really great college players. And and James Vargas was the number one junior player when he went to Florida. Um, they were seniors, obviously, but um, you know, just playing alongside them and, and, and getting better and and getting ragged on. Jesse Mudd was there, who was a yeah, hell yeah, of a talent. Yeah, cool. um, we had their team. Our team was really good. They had Ryan Cochran, uh, Russ Cochran's son. Um, you know, I was a kid who probably was really on the bottom of the totem pole and somehow was able to make the first event and then didn't miss an event the rest of my career and um, became a cocky little kid and got got my own ass handed to me once or twice by Jesse Mudd. 
not on the golf course, but playing flag football and mm. doing some other stuff. He's a big and, boy. Uh, I've never seen anyone. Well, I mean, I, I can't say I haven't seen anyone. I've never seen anyone take me by the throat, put me up in the air. <laughs> Next thing you know, I may have done a 360 and I was down on the ground and he was on top of me. I'm like, what just happened? In a blink of an eye. Well, I wish a, I it was a big yeah. boy. I wish I'd have known that. I'd have given him a call and gotten some real, got, he, gotten the real story behind the he, whole thing. He, I'm telling you what, he is obviously he's very athletic and very strong, but I mean, he's country strong. I mean, his yeah. hands are just so strong and what he's able to do. I mean, it was it's unfortunate he wasn't able to make it because he's such a great talent. Yeah, yeah. book scholarship. I didn't even know Florida had books down there. <laughs> ah, zing, we, see what uh, I did there? Serious question, though. So you go to, like, you said you were under-recruited. Your offer was from community college in your hometown. Florida's a pretty big powerhouse of a golf program. Was it just that nine holes that Buddy Alexander came out and saw you that convinced him, like, hey, this, this is a kid worth taking a chance on? You know, he had watched me hit balls on the range uh, at the U.S. Junior Amateur at Olympic. I think that was 20, 2003, 2004, somewhere around there. And then I proceeded to shoot 82, 82 and finish third from last. It'll happen. Uh, yeah, it happens. <laughs> and so, um, and other than that, I hadn't, there was no other contact with him until, you know, a couple weeks before he gave me a call. And he, he told me a story that was between me and another kid from Jacksonville who um, was a better player than me. Um, and he wasn't even sure if he was going to offer any one of us a, a scholarship. And he said he saw something in me and the way I just went about my practice round and did my business and, and it took it serious and, and said, you know, maybe I'll take a chance on this kid. And, and, and I got lucky that uh, he did. The other kid went to LSU and I don't know. I don't think he played much for yeah. that. Does he want a FedEx Cup? I don't think FedEx he's got cup. $10 million, yeah. you know, in a check from a PJ Tour. <laughs> Not many have. Pretty Billy. good bet, I would say. <laughs> but, I mean, that makes that's what one of the reasons why Buddy Alexander is one of the greatest college coaches ever. I mean, you got to spot the talent. Yeah, Hidden talent. He did a good job with that. So well, Let's fast forward a little bit. Like I said, you were a three-time all, first-team All-American. And then you and I got to play together yep. on the Walker Cup team where the red, white, and blue over in Northern Ireland – one of the greatest teams ever, if not the greatest team. Ever. I think it is the greatest team. I, I'll say that till the day I die. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it's our how can you disprove our it? Our if you opinion. can't disprove it, it's you know, all, all it's these old opinion. timers, you know, these old timers, veterans say some team in, in the '60s or something was really good, and they named names. And I was like, that's nothing. They didn't have eight out of ten on the no, PGA they didn't. Tour at one time. They didn't, and um, you know, it was an unbelievable experience. I, I think that's one of my greatest memories as as uh, in the game of golf because. We do everything as you know individually, but to ha- come in together as a team and have a, a great group, and we had a great group. I mean, this was a um, you know you take Kyle Stanley and Ricky Fowler out of the, the ten, the other eight or seven of us hung out a ton mm-hmm. doing amateur golf. And I mean, when I say we hung out, we played a lot, and then we would go out at night during the amateur amateur scene. We had a, a lot to drink, and then we would come back out the next day and, and shoot a hell around the golf. That's what amateur golf's That's all about. And, Living and the dream. I'm telling you what, amateur golf is not that way anymore. I don't, I don't think they do it the way They're we do it. They're missing out. They are missing out. It was a lot of fun. Um, but that was a hell of a team. I mean, Ricky Fowler was 18. Kyle Stanley was, you know, 19. We had a really young team. But um, Colt and I, I think we were the cheerleaders of the team by yeah, far. we were the vocal. Oh, we I were haven't... the vocal team. Oh, okay. Vocal leaders. He was number one. I was the, I was the assistant. Right, the, the assistant. <laughs> one of the captain. funniest story. Well, there's a couple of funny stories with Colt involved. I know. One of the funniest is that it was I think it was day one of the matches, and uh, Ricky and I had just we were first out. They were behind us. Ricky and I had beat Reese Davies and Lloyd Saltman, um, and so we're in there in the lunchroom in, in between the sessions, and and Colt comes in and he is pissed. I mean, he's uh. I don't know. He said, "God damn it." My- Justin effing Johnson and I so and I was like mad, well, like what happened and he said we had 210 yards to the, to the pin on 18 to the front, to the to, front yeah. and he laid up it was alternate shot we were one up against Roy McIlroy and Jonathan Caldwell 210 we had 210 front I was in the I hit, I hit the tee shot right first cut 210 232 hole he's like him and the caddies both go we should lay up I'm like Lay up. It's a five iron. You're gonna hit a five iron. Yeah. It's a par five. It's wide open. There's a little they, bunker there on the front right. Yeah. It means and they had to lay up already. Yeah. And I'm like, we're one up. Like hit this yeah. thing anywhere in Step front of on the green. Their throat. And it's yeah. Over. And he yeah. goes, I want to lay up. Lays it up in the tall fescue. So I hack a sandwich out. Goes over the back. I'm like, Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? This is about to happen. He hits this chip in the hole. Drills the pin and goes to six feet. Rory makes like a 12 footer for par. So now I got six feet for par to win the oh, match boy. and I miss it. 
And I just fucking lost it. And I was so mad. I came in, beat the shit out of the table. I was so mad. And Dustin's <laughs> so just like, pissed. bro, it's fine. Yeah, like, yeah. It we tied, fine. dude. This is DJ. <laughs> it ain't fine. I mean, when people think of DJ now, he's been that way from day one since we've all known. He's like, bro, not a big deal, man. We'll get it. Relax. Dude. There's like, another match. Like, we can go, we went out this afternoon and we, we destroyed, you know, we played a great singles match. And that was a great uh, time. I mean, just unbelievable. We were there for, I think, Five or six days before the matches yeah. even started, we were in Dublin, went out. We tried to get Kyle Stanley to at, le at least talk to a girl. Um, <laughs> that was a challenge no in good. itself. Well, oh, we dude, would, we, I mean, Colt, Colt, DJ, myself, Webb, we would just sort of mingle around and start talking to some girls. And then Kyle would come <laughs> over. And this is when Borat came out. And Kyle <laughs> would come over and literally, first thing, he would just start talking like Borat. And we're like, what that was his move. That yeah. was his move. Didn't work. Did not <laughs> Hard to believe well. that doesn't work. I got to rethink my whole shit then. And so it was absolutely hilarious and a uh, great time. I mean, and then one of the funniest, I uh, still one of the funniest things I think is, um, this is, this is not after, about me, Billy. Yeah. This is no, about if you, you. Can, if you got someone, <laughs> okay. you can, this yeah, is, I mean, a little juice. so we win, we do the ceremonies, we go back shower. We got this little dinner with family and, and the, all the officials and everything. And, and Colt literally may have been there at dinner for maybe 15 minutes. He may have been in his chair for 15 minutes. And next thing you know, he starts coming in and he is the waiter with a platter of shots, of red shots. It's time and to get so, amongst so Fireball? No, that fireball wasn't out yet. No, fireball uh, wasn't out yet. So red, it was though. red shots. And then next thing you know, five minutes later, he comes back and it's blue shots. And then five minutes later, it comes back and it's white shots. Patriotic. And, That's it. And I mean, God bless America. We destroyed the bar. At that unbelievable hotel, we had champagne. Sweet honored, will never. Be I the mean, same. champagne was being sprayed all over the the ceiling and everything. Mm -hmm. Trip Keeney's little boy, who may have been about eight or nine years old, was there having a good time. <laughs> he was not drinking. Let's clarify that there was no drink for the eight year old. But no, it was just uh, it was just great because we hadn't won. The United States team hadn't won yeah. since early '90s over there, and we had heard so much about it. And, you know, to go over there and win and, and have the experience we did. I mean, Chris O'Donnell was in, yeah. in the bar with us. Oh, really? The actor. Rob Batman. Or Robin. Yeah, yeah. Robin yeah. Sleaze. Yeah. yeah. He ain't cool enough to be Batman. <laughs> and, and by the way, there. I heard last night from Peter Tomasulo, uh, Chris O'Donnell listens to this. So He comes out to the Rock a decent amount. Yeah. And he's out there. He's a big golfer. You're Robin. You're That's nice to have Robin in Batman, your corner. Chris. Yeah. That's real nice. But, no, it was just a great week. I mean, like I said, it was an unbelievable and experience. You got to, and you played – Roy I played Roy yeah, three, split. three matches. I, I, I got the better. He was 17, better. right? I think he was 17. Him and Ricky were similar yeah, ages. 17, 18. Yeah, 17, 18. 18, 18. Yeah. Did you know, like, just watching him then, like, this kid's going to be a superstar? Well, I mean, I think we all knew going over there that Roy was this, this superstar. He just finished low am at the British Open, um, you know, a couple months prior. And, you know, we knew he was turning pro after. And he, I mean, he was impressive. But, I mean, was he, did I think he would be the guy he is now? No. But there was that potential. But, I mean, he wasn't a world beater the way he was. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it doesn't shock me that, you know, he's done what he's done. I mean, he's he's had that talent. He had that gift. And, and it was pretty cool to see what he's done since he's turned pro. He still Would you go 2-1 and one against him? 2-1. and one. He, he, That's uh, nice. That's a nice thing to hold he, over his head He now. was a little pissed at me because I was a little, <laughs> a little pissed in our, in our <laughs> matches. I guess one of the matches when Ricky and I, we were, we were four down – after five holes of our front nine. And Buddy Marucci comes over and wants to give us a pep talk, our captain. And and Ricky's like, listen, we're both like, Buddy, we're fine. We played like shit. Like, we're fine. No worries. Well, we turned all square. And then we beat him. Jesus. I don't remember that. Yeah. Then we beat him, I think, uh, two and one, I think it was. Um, a couple holes prior before we won, Ricky hit a bad iron shot. There was a par three that hard, had the wind hard off the left, and the way the green was, bunkers, high bunkers to the right, and Ricky had been over there all week in those bunkers. And I hit this great bunker shot, and the ball's coming down. It's looking like it's going in the hole, and I come down like a damn cheetah, <laughs> yelling at the top of my, running you know, after running the after the ball, <laughs> go in, go in, and it lips out. And, I, you know, I guess he was pissed about that. Um, you know, I guess he was pissed about the day before when we played our singles matches. And so the first hole, he nukes a drive. I mean, he hit one so far down there. I mean, he had like literally an eight iron in the green and he hit the 15 feet and I had 10 feet for birdie or, or whatever. And he makes this Eagle putt and he gives out the biggest yell <laughs> because he's like, yeah. he's letting me know this shit ain't happening anymore. This is like, my house. This is my house today. Yeah. And I was like, 
damn, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. I mean, I know y'all didn't like get along great back then, but now, now that you both play on the PGA Tour, everything cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I, you know, buddy told us about the riders over in UK. They can they can stir things up mm-hmm. a little bit, and we get back home, and I guess there was an article about me being boisterous, you know, loud, obnoxious American. And, and in the article, he said, hey, he seems like a good guy off the golf course. Because we had talked after the matches at the dinner, but he's seen, he's like off the, on the course, he's just very obnoxious, and which I'm not going to deny. I would call it <laughs> passionate and patriotic. I said yeah. I was passionate. I said I was a Sergio Garcia of the American team. There you go. That's yeah, a fair analogy. That's so yeah. I thought that was a fair analogy. Well, stay on that team gotta, subject. Yeah, I mean, obviously that was an incredible week, but... You haven't played on a President's Cup or Ryder Cup team yet in your career. How how important is that to you? Like how how bad, how badly do you want to make one of those teams? I mean, it, <laughs> there's there's a couple things I want to do before and before my career is over and and playing on one of those teams and more or less being on the Ryder Cup team. Yeah. And, and and I would actually want to play overseas on the Ryder Cup team. I <laughs> love that. Do. I love Stir that. It. Stir uh-huh. it. I love it. I love uh-huh. stirring the pot. I love egging. I love giving the needle back to the fans. That's why I love the waste management so much. You know, you get people, the fans yell at you. No one says anything back to them. I do because I'm like, hey, you're going to say something dumb. I'm going to say something back to you. Sort of put that needle back into you a little bit. So, um, yeah, it's it's one thing I want to do. I've been close. Um I haven't uh, taken care of my business to play well enough to make it on on points, and then then it's up to the captains to pick. And uh, I think there's only been maybe one or two years that I thought was I was close enough being picked, but I haven't done my part to, to at least give myself an opportunity. And hopefully, you know, it happens here in the next handful of years. For yeah. for you're, you're a guy I would call. Tell me if you agree with this. A bulldog. I would say you're a bulldog of a competitor. When you get in the hunt, you get in contention. Like you got to take your last breath if somebody's going to beat you, right? You're you're yeah. one of those guys. And there's a handful of those guys. Do you think that goes back to your time with like? being under recruited as a junior and feeling like the underdog when you go to Florida, or was that always kind of the way you were? I think I've always had that, that ability that you put me in the high pressure situations. I, I excel in those. I've always done very well. Um, I just think back to the days I played baseball and I mean, I played baseball until I was 14, but just, you know, certain big games against certain teams and AAU teams and coming in, I was a pitcher and being able to really uh, excel in those situations and at bats and, I've just always been able to do well in those situations. And um, people ask me why I do well, how I do well. I, I, I think I've just, some people are sort of born with that innate gene or innate ability. I think I have that. And some people have to learn how to do that. So, but I think it's just that, you know, I'm, it's a never die attitude. I'm not going to give up and I'm going to battle until, until, you know, there's, there's nothing left to battle for. Yeah. Well, I like that you say, you excel in the high pressure situations because I actually didn't know this until I started doing some research. You went to Q school four times <laughs> and got your card three times. And I mean, yeah, that's I that as either. high as pressure as there is. And yeah. I mean, for people that don't know, like in the golfing world, when Q school was Q, what Q school really was, yeah. I mean, it's go big or go home there. And I mean, to get three out of four, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I had to go back a couple years. I never really fully lost my card. The only time mm-hmm. I, I, I had conditional was after the 2011 season. I finished 125 to 150. Um, so I had conditional status going into the 2012 season. Um, and then I had conditional for 2013, but um, I got my card at the at 2012 Q school. So um, the one thing I've told people, which no one believes me, is that going through all the stages. So first year was 2009. I went through all three stages. 2010, I went back to two stages because I was I had injured my wrist. So I um, just said, hey, I need to play some more. Went to Q school, said, hey, what the hell, no big deal. So those three stages, those two, and then the finals in 2011 and 2012, I never looked at a leaderboard until after the final round. After, at Q school? At not one Q time. School, not one Going time. to the final wow. round, you don't know whether never. you're three clear or two out. That's what you did wrong all those years. I was checking my phone on like hole three. I was like, oh, shit, I'm already two out. <laughs> Fuck. God yeah, damn it. I got to make some Book birdies now. I'm going to start sending out resumes. Monster.com. So I was in I just had. I just thought that I knew that I was talented enough to get through Q school. I knew I was one of the best players in Q school. So I was trying to take all the things that could get into your head and maybe cause you to think too much. And so I knew if I just went out and handled my business, played well, then I would be successful. And you know what a good score is each day. And you can tell by your tee time, where you stand and everything. So obviously that's, I had an tough, idea, dude. but I never knew what that number was. I think if I knew what that number was, would I have been successful? I don't know. Did you ever enter like a final round being, and you could be somewhere close? I mean, it's hard to know whether one, I, am I the on one, the number? That could change whether I'm like laying 23rd up. one year? Yeah, it was close one year. 
2010. So that was the second year I went to Q school. Like I said, I had full status on the PJ tour for the upcoming year, but um, I went back just to go back. I I actually asked my caddy, who was Don Donatello, who was caddying oh, for me for uh, a, a brief stint, um, because I didn't realize I thought it was good. It was really tough that that final round. Got off to a good start. Didn't play well in the middle, and I'm even par. But I knew I had some strokes to 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 um, to f- play with. But I didn't realize it. Guys were making a run. Guys were actually playing well. I guess it became easier, and, and it was I wasn't playing nearly as good. But I got done, and I didn't realize that I was on that bubble. I think I was out, and I needed someone to make a bogey, and, and I think Will Strickler did to get me in my a, a teammate of mine. I was going to say, wow, yeah, what, what a kind teammate. of uh, parking lot yeah, job exactly. that was. Yeah. But I actually got upset at Don because I'm like, Don, you need to f- effing tell me this. Like, I, you know, I, I told you, I don't look at leaderboards. You need to ask. And he said, well, there's no leaderboards out here. I said, there's fucking TV people walking with us. Like, ask somebody where we stand. Come on, double date. That's and imp- so, that, that I, seems I, and crazy. So, because I, it would have changed the way I would have played the yeah. last few holes. There's a par five, number 17, that I, I played a little too conservative and made par on 18. I was in the middle of fairway, and, the, and I took a conservative shot into that pin location, and it would have changed, you know, how I would have played the last few holes. Yeah. Stay, on, I, stay on Q school, though. I mean, you're a guy that doesn't have to worry about that or anything. Does part of you wish that Q School was like it used to be, where you could go straight from, you know, working at a driving range to being on the PGA Tour? Yeah, when they got rid of Q School, I wasn't very uh, happy with it for the fact that it meant guys had to wait a year to get out the PGA Tour. And yes, there's data that says guys that come from the Corn Ferry Tour compared to Q School get their card or keep their card um more than the q school and i mean literally it was like maybe one person like the average yeah, was, was one it wasn't like a big disparity um i wasn't a big fan of it i i think uh that was that was a cool thing about q school you could have somebody who was working a nine to five job all year go through q school and get his card in the pj tour i think that's a great story and we miss those stories a little bit now uh and so ar- arguably the most exciting round it's of the golf best to watch. television it sixth is. round yeah, of q I mean, school when the cards yeah. were on the line you, here's a no status guy about to get mm-hmm. his card i mean you can't guys can't breathe i couldn't breathe watching it yeah and and so i think that that was just so great to watch and see you could tell who had that little it factor who could handle the pressure i mean the thing that i always couldn't understand is everyone's like well if i don't get my card on the pj tour i'm like well you got the web.com and corn fair you're gonna you got job status yeah. you know that final, the I thought the bigger one was second stage because if you didn't get the final, mm-hmm. you didn't have anything. I agree. Second, second stage was the nerve wracking one for me my first year because I'm like, man, if I don't get through here, I'm playing mini tours. I don't want to freaking play mini tours. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was fine. Called Jicky Jacks. Yeah, yeah Jicky Jack <laughs> tour. Yeah, that but second stage final round. That is second a beast. stage is a final round is a beast, and so. Uh yeah, I mean that's where I think you should have some cameras. Is that second stage final round? But you see I miss shit. those. Yeah. You would, you would, and so I miss the old Q school. I yeah. wish we'd bring it back. It won't ever come back, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's just for five something, like let somebody get out there. That's what I said I when they, when they were doing. I said let's have it for five or seven spots. You yeah, know? just something. Just so it, something so it's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. But you know, you, you start making your way in 2013. You get your first win over at Zurich. Mm-hmm. Missed made a made a hundred cuts in a row. It seemed like. But I want to fast forward a little bit because we don't have four hours to talk with you here. We, you know, we, got, we got limited time with Billy Ho. I want to go to 2014. Yep. You're having a nice year. You enter the playoffs at 69th yep. in the FedEx, which pretty good year. I mean, that's a lot of guys. You finish 69th about 15 years in a row. Nice living. Yeah. Things are good. Yeah, you miss the cut. You fall back to like 82 or whatever. And then you go to Boston. Yeah. And you finish second. And then you go win-win. First off, you should have won all three. Yeah. You should agree. Yeah, way to go, Billy. I Agreed. can't believe you did that. Fat. <laughs> Choke. Yeah. Choke from John. But I want to know, so you, you finished second, then you finished first over in Denver at Cherry Hills. You head into East Lake with a chance to win the FedEx Cup. What was that week like? Like, going to bed every night knowing, you know what, in a couple of days I might win $10 million. I, uh, it was funny. I got asked Sunday after I won BMW Championship um, from a, uh, one of the interviewers, one of the journalists, what – you know, what do I expect a tour? Cha- I mean, tour championship FedEx Cup. You know, do you think you have a chance? And I mean, cocky me. I, I just came off a second. I just won. I'm feeling really good about my game. And no one's playing better. Deep down inside, I said, I want to say I'm gonna fucking win. Like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking win. Um, but I said, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd put money that I'm gonna have a chance to win on Sunday. I'm gonna be in the mix. I have a chance to win. And it was just a, a great 
week of nothing changed. I did everything that I had done the weeks prior. Felt great. I think what helped me Saturday night, um, because I was tied for the lead with Roy. I was I was leading on Thursday with Chris Kirk. I was leading on Friday with with Roy McElroy. I was leading on Saturday with Roy McElroy. So we're tied um, for the lead, or maybe I was leading. I was leading by myself on on Friday after second round, and me and Roy were tied on Saturday. Um, but the Florida Gators football game was on that night. Well, it got postponed due to the weather. You know, it was supposed to uh, kick off at like seven or something. It didn't kick off till nine or ten, which is perfect for me because I don't sleep a lot, and I needed to somehow sleep as much as I can or stay up as late as I could. So I stayed up until like one, two a.m. in the morning, watched the entire Florida Gator game, went to bed, woke up, and it was like the first time I woke up and uh, having a lead or something like that, and I had a sense of calm, like just super calm, wasn't nervous. Just was like, hey, this is going to be a fun day. Like, I was like, wow, this is surreal. I, there was no emotion. I remember telling my stats guy, Mark Horton, when we were, got done um, warming up and walked to the first tee, you know, he's giving me a little pep talk. And I said, dude, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Whatever happens today, it's all going to be fine. And I went out and I played really good. Got a little nervous sort of around the turn. Um, and then, you know, made a big putt at 16 and, and sort of knew that locked me up for – Par putt, right? Big par, par putt, 16, yeah. yeah, big par putt, and uh, sort of knew that locked me up um, for the FedEx Cup and, and Tour Championship. What changed for you after the first playoff event? Like you go, you you have that <laughs> one, you miscut, you drop the eighty second, then all of a sudden something had to click, whether you knew it or not. Is there something you can put your finger on that led to this, like one of the best stretches in playoff two, golf? Two things. Um, I went home and after, and my wife is we're right about to have her baby here in a couple weeks, our first one, and and I was like, man, I'm just ready for the new season, like. I felt like I played well all year and I haven't gotten anything out of it. I'm just, I'm ready for the new season to start. And she's like, just go up, enjoy Boston. You play well, you play well, you don't, not a big deal. So I go up there and I'm talking to Matt Rollins and in the pink trailer on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. And he goes, Hunter Mahan had an awful year this year and he won last week. And now he could have the best year of his career. You know, he's set up to have the best year of his career depending on what happened in the next couple of weeks. I was like, okay. You know, so that got my mind in the right stage. And then I hadn't put, I hadn't putted well all year. I've hit the ball beautifully all year and I just hadn't putted well. And I'm on playing a practice around, uh, what we tee off on Friday usually. So it's Wednesday and hitting some putts before we go out. And my teacher Todd Anderson's like, Hey, he's watching me and it's not looking great. He said, Hey, do this with your grip. Like get this right hand a little bit more on top. It was a little too much under the, the, the putter grip. And, Got a little bit more on top. So from there, then my left hand had to get a little bit longer. And it just allowed me to feel like I, I could feel like the load of the putter was loading. And I could feel the head a little bit better. And I hit like 10 putts on the putting green, and it was awesome. Went out, you know, practice. You just practice. You just never know. Felt good in the pro-am. But I made two big putts on the first round of 17 and 18 for birdie from about 10, 12 feet on both holes. One was a left to right, one was a right to left. And I made those putts. And I was like, I'm good. This is it. I'm I'm locked in for this week, and then I just I that was just all I needed. I just need a little bit of confidence. You give me a little bit of confidence, and I'm gonna run to the to the finish line with it. Yeah, you're. Everyone great. listening right now is going home yeah, right now. I'm like, oh yeah, my <laughs> hand, my hand's too far on, underneath. But because of that run that you had in those playoffs, well, first off, you made thirteen and a half million dollars in three weeks. Good pretty, job. Pretty good hourly good rate. Good job on yeah, that. Wasn't too you bad. Break that down. But they've now kind of changed the way the Ryder Cup is picked because. <laughs> Tom Watson was the captain and picked the Ryder Cup after Boston after you finished second. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Now we're waiting until after the FedEx Cup playoffs, all this. But in your honest opinion, should you have been on the Ryder Cup team that year? When he picked the team at Boston, after Boston, no. If he would have picked the team two weeks later, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean how under, could you say no? no under current better. criteria, I think you make that team 100%. I agree. And, and you know, that it was it – was, it sucked because I really want to be a part of that team. That was a team that Patrick Reed and Jordan Spieth were on the first year. There were some guys on that team that weren't playing good. Um, and you just never know. They're just not playing good. And and, and um, you just never know if they're going to play good at the Ryder Cup or if they're going to continue the form that they've had. Sometimes you wish you could have a sub, you know, bring in yeah. that bring in that reliever. You know, that, that could have been me. And, you know, and another thing I don't do, I don't, I don't, um, I, I don't, call up cat captains and try and state my case. I don't 
you know, try and say anything I can to get picked. That's just not me. Well, I've never been that guy. They got dusted. Yeah, they did get dusted. That was unfortunate. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, it was sad Tom, to watch. I'm playing pretty good right now. Yeah. It was funny because I, I saw Tom uh, in November. We we were, I think we were playing over in um, Japan or something. And he was like, man, I really, I really effed up that one. Really? Yeah. He said, I, you should have been on that team. But it does oh, make wow. sense. Like, he acknowledged it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, it, but he, he, but I mean, I just, I hadn't done anything. I just finished yeah, second well, you in were Boston. The first of the but big I mean, stretch. you know, maybe if he picks a team after BMW, maybe I make the team. Yeah. That's part of the but, reason why they probably changed it. Well, yeah, because they're picking the team, what, yeah. five, six weeks Way before too the Ryder Cup? Well, like, and you don't even Jason Duffner, you know, it, it, it's cool when you get compliments from your tour players. And I think Duffner was on that team uh, in 15, and he was. It's a great guy, and, and Duffin is a straight shooter. And he's like, listen, if if they're doing things the right way, they should see that when you start playing good, you go on a stretch of, of runs of, of weeks of playing well. This wasn't just like a brief little stint. Like in your career, you, when you've played well, you've played well for three, four, five, six weeks in a row. And so, you know, if they would have known that, then they would have, you know, picked the team. Duff yeah. pays attention. A lot of people Duff, don't know that. No. Duff pays attention. Duff's very aware. He, he acts like he's not very – with it or smart, but he's he's smart one of like the smartest. A fox. By he's, the way, I need you to talk to him because when I first started doing the whole media thing, I went up to him at the PGA at Bell Reeve just to say hi because we're boys. We used to, yeah. you know, go yeah, to Cowboy games together, get, exactly. always hanging out, dinner, all this. First thing he says, I don't talk to media. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? So dude, this kind of respect that. Honestly. This carried on for like two years. Finally, San Diego, Tory Pines, just recently, Last week. I finally had a breakthrough. We talked and all this. Wow. We're texting back and forth. Everything's good. I go, hey. Want to come Phoenix, on? you want to come on the podcast? He goes, I don't do podcasts. I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, Duff would be so good. Duff would be great. I, I mean, need you to tell. If guys saw who Duff was, like, Duff is, if Duff likes you, Duff's, Duff's great. If Duff doesn't really care for you, he doesn't care for you. He won't give you, you know, the time of day. All the way out. Yeah. You know, just the way, that's his personality. But, you know, he's a straight shooter. He doesn't, you know, there's no, like, in between. He's not faking you. He's not a fake guy. So, he's a great guy. He's awesome to be around. I played with him for two days last week. Uh, the first two rounds, and he's just he's absolute he's an absolute beauty. He's he beauty. really. I kind of like that he just says no. I don't talk to media. Fuck it, yeah. that's it. Yeah. End of story. But I, no discussion. <laughs> so I went. Up, I was like, dude, I'm still the same guy. Like, here's a guy. I mean, he's he's the one who woke me up before the Vegas tea time yeah, on Saturday, like because he was staying in the other room of my suite. Like we used to hang out together, all this, and he just he just won't do it. He's, he just I, it it drives me nuts. I'm like, it would be so uh, good to see Duff in in here because I mean he's hilarious for one. He's very very knowledgeable. But we were texting last week after one of the rounds. He shot two over the first day yep. playing with you. And then um, I see him in the lobby getting coffee the next morning. I go, how'd it go yesterday? He goes, I'm just like you. I can't play anymore. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"God." laughs> he Come might on, be my Duff. new favorite player. Yeah. I love him. The, the the waking up of Vegas, that reminded me of another Walk Cup story. No, no go ahead and fire it. No, we we're past the we Walker Cup. We got to move on. This is Billy's show. We, we, uh, there you go. So we wake up next morning. And I, mm. I, I think someone had to go wake up Colt. Someone did no, have to go wake Sandy up. No, Sandy called me, called my room, and I answered. So we answered. Really, you tell it. So we're it's going. We're riding to the airport in in a charter bus, and I mean, half of us are just feeling awful. But Colt's the most of us well, all. Describe the lunch. roads too in Northern Ireland. I mean, it's they're really, about yeah. I mean, we're in a charter fun. bus, and I don't know even how the charter bus fits on, and they're bumpy and they're windy, and Colt goes. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying not to laugh before I tell it. <laughs> Colt goes. <laughs> okay, be serious here for a second. Hey, buddy, you think the bus could stop if I need no, to? No, I said, buddy, how far do we? How much longer do we have? And he Why said, you had to puke? He said an hour. I go. You better tell this man to pull over real quick. <laughs> so somehow we're able to pull the bus over in the middle of the road, and Colt goes over and <laughs> does what he needs to do. The funny part was. Dustin Johnson chases him off the bus, is right behind them with his phone videoing the entire thing. Yes. As any good teammate <laughs> yeah. would, by the That's way. my guy. We need to see if that footage still exists. He's probably got it. I we threw might up need some to see it. Oh. There <laughs> was red, white, and blue splattered all over that. I was about to say, you taking uh. shots that are red, white, and blue, uh, you yeah. have stress. And any dinner was a bad move. Yeah, you did not eat any food. Hey, but I'll tell you what, I puked and I slept the whole way from. You Northern did. You were back home. I felt puking rally. Yeah. Like Billy Bob. Yeah. All right, let's get yeah. back to a little bit of your golf here, though, because we talk about the. Let's. I want to. Can I stay on the FedEx Cup here, real quick? Oh, yeah, pretty yeah, big deal in your deal. So you win that tournament. Yep, incredible. You're the Rory Slayer. You do all that. You get the biggest check in golf. The next day, then you have a kid. You know, <laughs> two days later. Two days later. Stay how do? <laughs> what? How did your life change, like from a day to day perspective, after you get a check for that much money, knowing like basically, I've done it. 
does anything change for you personally at that point? No, I think, I, I mean, I said at the time, you know, that happened and, and it still holds true today. All it did was, you know, it allowed me to be financially set for, for my life. Um, I mean, to a certain extent, I mean, you know, you live within a means, yeah, that 10 million go a long way. Um, uh, it's not 10 million. I mean, it's a million deferred and then 9 million. It's a lot of fucking taxes. money, Billy. It's a shitload. It's a yeah. lot of money. <laughs> it is. But I mean, you know, not coming from money, I was able to help my parents out, do stuff for my brothers, you know, just, you know, take care of the people who've looked after me for so long. And, and I, it didn't change who I was. It may, I mean, I put more pressure on myself. I mean, I put my put a lot of pressure on myself, period. But probably put more pressure on myself to try and live up to that a little bit, um, which is a detriment to me. And it's more likely a detriment to the majority of guys in, in the game of golf when you try to live up to something like that. I think you, need, you should play like that all the time. Um, but it was just, it was, it was awesome. It was a great time and it was a lot of fun. The one thing that no one believes is that Jim Furyk did it. I know a lot of guys, I never looked at my bank account. Usually it gets put in. Usually our, our money. What you, that's the usually, most fun part. Usually our money gets put in on think. Tuesday. Comes through on a Tuesday. And Jim Furyk told a story before I won. I remember him saying this a couple years before I won. You know, he you know he said he doesn't usually look at his bank account, but he did that day. Like he was like looking at it. He's like, usually the money's in there by this time. And yeah, I think he wind up calling somebody at the tour. Like, hey, <laughs> where's my, where's money? my Yo, money? Where's my money? And yeah. so yeah, I just never did that. Like it was. That's, I it was, was even clicking I refresh. Asked, I was with two hundred times the week after he won his, and I was like, "Did you get that deposit yet?" He's like, "I don't know." I'm like, "You don't know? Yeah. How do you not know? Call Can somebody right yeah. now." I mean, I, you I, I, people were shocked, money. but yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. it was just one of those things. Was like, I know it's in there. I don't need to see it. So, any toys, anything like we always like Justin Thomas when he wins, he treats himself to something. You got any? Did you after a check like that? Did you do one thing for yourself, something cool you always wanted. No, no, it's hard to believe. Dude. No, I'm, I'm not built a pretty sick house. Yeah, yeah, and then I just uh, sold that house. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we had my wife and I had talked about buying a house, anyways, and we were going to start looking after, you know, sometime after the baby came. It all it meant was we were allowed, allowed to pay cash. We paid cash for the house, and we paid cash for all the renovations. Um, and it just that was a really cool thing to do. And um, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big like toys. I, I I love I love toys. I would love to have all, a lot of cars. I'd love to have a lot of watches and everything. But when it comes down to it, I'm just not. I'm like, okay, well, I need w one watch. I bought one watch in my life, and I'm I have ten watches because I've had some deals and done some events where I got some watches, and you know, so I have those watches. And I, I would like to have more cars, but I'm like, I'm not home enough to drive them. They sit there. They don't do anything. Um, so it's not that I'm just. I just haven't done that. Well, I mean, a lot I like will the say barn rat. The, yeah. the only thing, yeah, the yeah. only thing I spend my money on, and but it, it there's a, a cost value to it is, is I like to fly private. Well, that's, a good that's deal. it. That's the ultimate. And I like to, trip. and and I I've seen the benefits of flying private from events, and and I'm with in reason not flying, you know, over to the British Open private. You know, I don't have that cash like DJ and Brooks and some of those guys, but. You know, I, I I like to try and fly as much as I can to get back now and see my kids or to, you know, just have more time on my hands to do whatever I need to do. Yeah, Respect. I mean, flying private's a nice thing. It ain't and by terrible. the way, if you don't like treating yourself to some toys, you can treat your favorite podcast host to some toys. We got Justin Thomas to agree if he wins a major in the near future, we each get a Rolex, so that's pretty cool. We basically just yeah, like extort our guests into yeah. giving us free shit. So I mean <laughs> it's part, of our, it's part of our could, charm, dude. You know, just one up him a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. But, <laughs> Billy, we've known each other for a long time and I've always admired like when we were in amateur golf, like the way you hit your long irons was just absurd to me. You were the best long iron player I'd ever seen at the time. Great ball striker always. I feel like that should relay or translate into good finishes in major championships. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, to be honest, your track record's not that great. You have one top ten in a major, and it was Jesus, your, Cole. It was your it was first, first one. You first open. one. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm hey, we're open. honest on here. I'm, I, I'm, you can be blunt with me are as you, much Are you can. surprised you haven't had more success? Yeah. Is it, is it a mindset going in that you put too much pressure, or is it – what is it? I think it's a mindset that I think i got to play perfection golf. I'm a perfectionist at heart, so I feel like i got to play perfect. Um my short game hasn't been good. It's gotten a lot better the last couple of years, and now it's 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 reliable. But um, it's not uh, that has held me back. My short game, and then trying to play p perfect golf. Is that help. different from a normal PJ Tour event? Yeah, yeah. There's certain events. I there's there's just I just think you know majors ask so much of you, and I feel like um, I, you got to be perfect to win, and that's not the case. And a regular PJ Tour event, you don't have to be perfect. 
yeah, there's certain shots you need to, you know, really pull off. But a lot of times you can get away with stuff. And, and majors, you just can't get away with that stuff as much. Um, so, yeah, it's been disappointing to only have one, one top 10 in a major. Um, hopefully that changes here soon. Um, hopefully I get myself in more contention because I feel like I, I do have that game. I do have that ability to, to play well in majors, to, you know, win a major, win multiple majors. Um, I think I, I've grown as a player and I've learned some things that hopefully will help me. The last couple of years, I haven't hit the ball to my ability, to what I've, I've only been able to. And the only reason I've been able to play well is because I've been able to have a decent short game now and and I put it halfway decent so that that's got me around the game uh, around the course a little bit more often so hopefully the ball striking seems to be coming back to me a little bit more um so we're see I mean it was funny Colt was doing the CBS at Bell Reeve and he was doing the the 16th hole out there and I remember him saying after one of the rounds he said I'm pumping you up about being this great long iron player and you literally skank one into the bunker in the front <laughs> of the green I mean, make me look good, Billy. Yeah, and I and he said, "Come on, you gotta make me look better." And so I said, "Okay, I'll do it. I'll hit a better shot tomorrow." And then I skank another one in the bunker. I then hit one good long iron shot on that hole all week. And I'm like, "God damn it!" And all I'm thinking about was Colt in my head over this. That's all what the you should be thinking too. about, Majors. How, <laughs> what's Colt gonna think on exactly. this long iron, Billy? How am I gonna be the Tony Romo of CBS for golf if you don't do what I say? You're great I know. at. I know you could be the Tony. I'm trying Romo. to make a million dollars You're a week. Need I know. I, come on. I know. You got that you gotta help me out, Billy. You're gonna need I'm Jimmy. To help you. you gotta help me out, Billy. Is it one of those things though for majors is like as you get older, what are you 34 I'm now? 34, right? Yeah. Is it is it one of those things where like all right, I'm 34 now, I have fewer and fewer opportunities going forward to win. You put more pressure on yourself when they do come up? No, I think I actually put less pr- I've started putting less pressure on myself than majors than I did early in my career. Um, you know, I know I have less chances, but I know that my game fits well at a lot of the majors. Um, I haven't played well at the Open Championship. I've got some bad draws, but it is what it is. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. yeah. Preach to the choir, but, but I never got to You know, one. Augusta should fit me pretty well because uh, it's it's a course you got to hit a lot of greens in regulation, and I've learned you got to hit it in certain spots of the greens to make it easy to putt instead of three putting all the times. Um, so I think Augusta could fit me very well. U.S. Open's always been a course that's fit me very well. That's what I That's think. the one. I feel like you're you a keep U.S. It away Open from Chambers guy. Bay. Would you and, hit 18 and, and greens? Only got to hit 18 Marion. greens yeah. at Marion, right? Like, yeah. I feel like you're tailor-made for U.S. Open. Yeah, now that they're going back to the additional U.S. Open courses, um, it's nice. I mean, it was cool yeah. to play the Chambers Bay, the Aaron Hills, but those aren't what the U.S. Opens... No, I didn't like Ben. No sure. one, you have to say that could be nice. I hate no, those. And, and no, I don't. I, I said it bluntly to Mike Davis and the USGA officials. I said, listen... Chambers Bay is a cool, cool little course. Yeah, I said I did my comments there, but it had nothing to do with the design of the golf course. It was just the greens were were god awful, and okay. I was it was off. It was one hundred percent. It didn't look like a U.S. Open. There's too many classic great U.S. Open venues that are available out there to not utilize them. I was every so year. mad about Aaron Hills. Everybody's like, "Oh, this place is gonna be so hard." It's 7,800 yards. I'm like, the fairways are 50 yards they got, wide. They got dude. killed in yeah. Chambers. It looked like a care. British. Open. It looked yeah. like an Open Championship yeah. out there. I don't and like so, that. And so it's nice that we're back at traditional U.S. Open courses. I mean, I, I played last I, last year, I, I played well at Oakmont. I was after middle of the third round, I was top five, and then I, the ball striking left me, and I started hitting bad golf shots Wing, and wingfoot. can't get away. Oh, yeah, I was at Wingfoot, wingfoot. my bad. Yeah, whatever. Oakmont was 2016. Yeah. Wingfoot, Wingfoot. So yeah, wingfoot. I've been there. Bad Green Sunday. Jack, I've yeah. been there. I, you know, I, I didn't finish my third round off very well, and then I just had an awful Sunday. So I've had my chances. I just haven't, you know, completed it the way it needed to be. Hey, your best chance at a major in your eyes, which which one is it? Um, I I think it's the Open Champion. I mean the U.S. Open, just because you got to drive the ball well, and I'm a really good driver of the golf ball, and so I think that's probably my best chance. Um, I think the the, the two majors that I want to win the most would be the Open and the and Augusta, and it's always it was always the U.S. Open, always the U.S. Open, but it's changed. Uh, I've only missed two majors in my career since I've, you know, since 2013. And one was, um, um, one was shoot, I, three. I missed a, the Masters, the U.S. Open, and and the uh, Open Championship. Missing the Open Championship was one of the toughest ones because I didn't realize how much appreciation I had for the history, the fans, the way they treat you. It's such a great week over there, and I love going over there. And Augusta, you know, I, I've I've come to 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 love Augusta more. I've, you know, growing up the way I did, I looked at Augusta as being 
you know, stuffy, uptight, these people who didn't thought they were better than themselves. And, and the more I've been on the grounds, the more I've seen who the members are of Augusta, the more I've gotten more comfortable being at, a, at the grounds of Augusta and the, and the Masters. Like I said, it's just like, wow, these people are really great people. They love the game of golf. They love this sport. They love this course. They love showing, you know, off to the patrons and doing everything the right way. So that's sort of grown on me a lot. We need back nine Sunday, Billy Horschel in the mix at a major because I can't imagine the passion. Yeah. That would bring be, the cheetah back out. out. Yeah. yeah. Bring, bring cheetah. that cheetah. Going. Yeah. Don't run after your ball at Augusta. <laughs> do it against like Rory, that. too, if you, know, you can. You, no running at Augusta. No running. No yeah, running. So you can't do that. You can't do, do you think that. you should get a. A Ryder Cup bid just on the fact that you seem to be the the Rory stopper. You did it in the Walker Cup. You did it at the at, uh, at East Lake. You seem to be the guy, the kryptonite right there. I've, I've actually, you know, maybe maybe I am his kryptonite. I'm not sure. I think he's got me the last couple of times he played. But um, yeah, I mean, I've in some of my wins, I've taken down some of the top players. I mean, I beat Jason Day when he yeah. was a top guy. You know, when when I won a BMW, you had Sergio and Bubba who were were um, top five players in the world, top ten players in the world. So. Um, you know, I'm not scared of those guys. I'm not scared of what your world ranking mm-hmm. is. It doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, you have played better than me over a stretch of period, but you know, we're, we're here today, and that's well, all. Billy that on. Look let's, out. Yeah. let's put the T in the ground. Yeah. And like I said, out. I, I, uh, as I've grown older, and I think I've mellowed a little bit. I'm, I'm still very cocky inside, but I'm not as much Don't cocky ever lose on the outside. It, oh, it will never go away. Don't ever lose. When it. I, when I, I think you need to about, express it more. I mean, sleaze. I know I'm dog shit and everything, and I walk around like I'm King Dingling. I can tell. I mean, I've seen enough of these. You, you, uh, I mean, if someone didn't know, you know, about your golf game, they would thought you would be, you know, really 10 good. time major yeah, winner. You're right. You have shot 57s right. multiple times. You played one tour event. Should have happened. A bunch of lip outs, or else I would have been there. Bad waves, you know right. the deal. Well, you've seen the program. <laughs> yeah. so now it's time for the fun stuff. Yeah. A little emergency nine. Oh, I got yeah. one quick one because this yeah. matters right now. Okay. We're in okay. this middle of a, of a, we're doing a season long survivor pool, right? Yeah. Oh, Where we got to pick great. one guy yeah. every week. And once you use them once, you can't use them anymore. I'm starting off a little bit slow. I'm getting my shit kicked right now. So I need to know where do I pick you this year? Starting off a little slow. He hasn't made a dollar yet. Everyone oh, I'm guys over made two. A cut. Oh, I'm sorry. No one's made a cut. I'm oh, well, he's over two on subpar on gravy and the sleeves on Sirius <laughs> XM. He's over three. I'm over three, which is hard to do, uh. granted, but I had Henley and Charles Howell, who was 17 for 17 at Torrey Pines, missed cut. So I need to know where should I be picking you, and you can't pick him when you're So my stats guy would give you three courses. One of the three courses I have to get there. That's East Lake. Uh, my record's been really good up until last year. Um, the other two would probably be um, WC FedEx St. Jude. Mm-hmm. I've okay. done very well. Good. I'm Memphis putting this there. in the bank. And then early in my career, I haven't played well there, um, but I've played really well there over the last four or five years, and that would be Wyndham. Okay. Wyndham, no, FedEx St. Jude. The second there last problem time. is there's a guy named Webb Simpson that plays there that's pretty good. Right? Yeah, he's him pretty good. Take Billy. Um, I'm trying to think. There's probably you another course somewhere. Do. I take who I no, want. you just do it. Do what I say. Took Tony Fino out Farmers. No big deal. I finished second. I'm down 500 grand. It's no big deal. Dude, I you clawed back. Tony any week. I mean, he finishes top five or top he really ten does. Week. He really does. And I clawed back last year and won this thing, by the way. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i take that Asterisk. to heart. All right, let's go E9. Yeah, all right, E9. Okay. You know, number one. Movie about the life of Billy Horschel. You pick any actor, dead or alive, to play you. Who is it? Christian Bale. Uh, you're, <laughs> see, that's the cockiness coming out. I also have Christian Bale. To now, yeah. Christian Bale. Amateur golf? We're it would have, have been jackass. Uh, Steve-O. Yeah, Steve-O. Yeah, Steve-O. There he is. <laughs> because I had, I, I had a really tight buzz cut yep. back then. Yes. And I don't know how this got out in the media, but early in the week, some media found out that everyone on the team called me Steve-O. I mean, you look just Dude, like... Dude, it, it's uncanny back the in amount your you look like. Yeah, yeah, and so they didn't realize who Steve-O was, and then when they really realized that it was part of Jackass, they were like, oh, wow. This yeah. makes sense. Yeah, this makes yeah. sense now. First How are you at taking shots to the nuts? And I was Jackass that week, so... Yeah. <laughs> How are you at taking shots to the nuts? Okay. Not, not as not good as, as he good. is. <laughs> First off, do you love yourself at all? Christian Bale, I mean, God, he's a pretty good-looking man. Yeah, I mean, hey, Matt Evy says, uh, he goes... Christian Bell and was it the fighter with Mark Wahlberg? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where he's, he's like the, the drug the drunk. Yeah. yeah, he said, you know, when he's leaned out, I'm identical. I'm like, so what are you saying? I'm a druggie now or something? No, he was just lean. No, yeah, he's, he's a weird lean. ass dude too, so he can do the role. American <laughs> Psycho is crazy. This works Christian out perfect. Yeah. Okay, Christian Bell it is. All right, next question. Grant, Florida, stand up. That's where you come from. You went to a high school called Bayside High School. Question is, who's the bigger heartthrob at Bayside High School, you or Zach Morris? <laughs> Zach Morris. <laughs> a long shot. I saw you went to by Bayside. A long I was like, Holy shot. shit. Yeah. I saw that too. That was good. Uh, yeah, by a long shot. You didn't. You weren't. You weren't the, the Zach Morris of of the Grant, Florida Bayside High. I mean, high? listen. I I held my own. I mean, I wouldn't say that I was 
Zach Morris. You weren't Screech. Yeah, I wasn't Screech. <laughs> yeah, Let's yeah. just say I wasn't Screech. I was I. Yeah, I was an okay ladies man. Okay, right. perfect. Right. You held right. your own. Yeah, I held my all own. All right, respect. All right. Number three, we all we all know you're a diehard Gator fan. Okay, you do the Gator Chomp a turn. You did it <laughs> in Atlanta when you won the FedEx Cup. Which you win the FedEx Cup, you can do whatever the hell you want. Okay, they haven't won a national title in football since 2008. I know you're very well aware of that. What if I told you I guarantee you a national title next year, but in every PGA Tour event you play this year, you have to wear all red? Would you do it? Sure. No, no, no. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's dedication. Yeah, because that is dedication. From what I heard from Keith Mitchell is the Gators hate or the, the Bulldogs hate the Gators and the Gators hate the Bulldogs more than anybody. Yeah. Well, you said red. I mean, you got to go all red, bud. We're talking red shirt, red pants. Well, Every if, you day, said, if you said red and he, black. He could say it's for Nebraska. If I didn't it, say black. So, yeah. But all listen, red, that could be multiple things. Listen, I just a lot of red She schools. didn't see the ball bounce. She didn't say it didn't bounce. <laughs> right. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I said red. Big difference. Yeah. Yes. Big I difference. would wear all red if the Gators win a national title next year. Sorry, Ralph Lauren. You're going to have to make a ton of red pants. Every red day. Shirts. Wow. Every day. With That's a red okay. belt, red hat. Red and white well, shoes. I'll, I like I'll rock it. That's can, dedicated. That's a true fan right there. I'll rock it. I bet they can do that. We may get into a little more fashion here in a minute. All right, I'm going to stay on the same same topic here. We had Keith Mitchell on last week. Like we said, Florida, Georgia hate each other. I asked him this question, but I did it with Nick Saban. I'm going to ask you, would you be willing to play the Zurich this year with Kirby Smart if it meant that Florida would beat Alabama? Or in Georgia. the SEC championship. They beat Georgia. Kirby Smart I'm sorry, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, I'm getting my people mixed up. It's probably a missed cut, so you, you got to factor Kirby, that. You hang in. out with Kirby Smart for a few days, and then the Gators beat Georgia. Let's see who hates. You who know more. what? I would do it because Kisner has <laughs> talked about how how he's a pretty cool guy, and he texts with him on a regular basis, and yeah. he gets back, and he's not a bad guy to be around. So, sure, why not? Okay, you mend the mend that fence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll sure. see if I can like learn, you know, figure out if I can. Delve into some secrets of his so I can pass on the Oh, Mullen. that's good. A little recon. Yeah. A little undercover work. Yeah. You are yeah, a true KGB fan. style. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Number five. If you could take a piece of any other tour player's golf game right now and put it in your game, whose would it be and what would it be? I would say Justin Thomas Iron Iron Game. Ooh, I think he, he is um, the best, if not the best, iron player on tour from with any club. Um, you look at what he's done with strokes gain approach over the last handful of years. He's been, I think, top five over the last five years. Um, I think that just that's a, a a great advantage to have. I mean, everyone talks about distance, but when you think about how many times you're gaining on a weekly basis with your iron play, that means you're having a lot of shorter birdie putts, and and it's it's led to his success. I think one I'm of the surprised most by that. Yeah. I, I am and I'm not, but like well, yeah. one of the things that doesn't get talked about enough with him is how good he is at changing speeds. That's yep. His it's distance control impressive. with his wedge game and the way, you know, I think when he when he first came out, he didn't have that. You know, you could see it was, see, full, bore. It was yeah. full bore. But now it's it's really impressive to watch. I remember talking to Tiger at Augusta with him this year with especially his short game shots. His short game shots he has is stupid good, but um, just the way he's able to change speeds, you see him hit a seven iron, you know, 185, 190 yards, and then maybe he'll hit it 165 one time. That's impressive. That, a lot of guys don't have that. Um, that allows you to attack more pins and open up more shots on a, on a, on any course, and it, it becomes a, a vital asset at majors as well. Yeah, his tempo with the wedges is one of the most beautiful things to watch. I think on the PGA Tour. All right, next question. You got a lot of pub for your octopus pants. <laughs> 2013 Open. What is the next animal to appear on a pair of Billy Horschel pants? Mm. We they've actually been exnated um, after Peter. Of course, <laughs> Peter Ruined gave us a call. <laughs> Peter called Ralph Lauren. They didn't like all these animals on my pants, and what? and then they're and not then, real animals. They're not dead. They're, they're not. Pictures. Yeah, yeah. These aren't actual octopus. No, uh, there was a, a time there where we were wearing some type of printed animal pants and majors, and we were doing well. Well, then it came that whenever I wore those pants, I played awful. And usually uh, warm on Sunday, um, and they were always at majors. And so, Todd Anderson, my coach, goes, "You know, what do you think about not wearing these animal pants anymore? They're not paying off the way they used to." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And so a year or two went by, and I think he finally convinced me. And then he told we told the Ralph Lauren people, "Hey, let's let's chop this." No this, more ain't, animals? this ain't helping. Okay. This ain't helping the final round. Yes, this this is really cool. You get a lot of exposure, but 
you want to also get the exposure for playing well in them too. Yeah, when you win well. in them, it yeah. looks better. What was your first reaction when you saw the octopus pants? Were you like, oh, these are sick? Or were you like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to wear these? Well, they asked me about it. I was driving home. Um, my wife picked me up from the airport and they called me about some octopus pants. I said, sure, I'll wear them. Not a big deal. I thought it was like a different cut or a different style. I didn't realize there was actual octopus. <laughs> on yeah, like, oh, there's an octopus. Like, yeah, we got until, eight legs in our shit. Until literally the week before I got my clothes at Memphis, I opened up the box. I'm like, oh my God, this is actual octopus. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah. Wow. Sunday of the U.S. Open. Yeah. It was, it was Sunday, right? Yeah. So it was actually supposed to be a Friday of the U.S. Open. And then I think on like a Tuesday, they pushed it back to Saturday. And then um, Wednesday night, they're like, okay, we're going to make one more change. You're going to wear them on Sunday. And so, and we had put out, we put it out on social media and, you know, social media, some people liked them, some people hate them. Some people like, you're a disgrace to the game of golf. Of course. You shouldn't be wearing those. And then by the time I teed off, by the time Sunday came and I teed off, they were completely sold out online and they were completely sold out in the merchandise tent. So that's, I mean. Shit worked. Yeah. It worked. I played. Octopus seems yeah. like a weird animal to pull out. Hey, you finished fourth. It could have yeah, been like yeah. I mean, yeah. Could have been a bird. Could have missed the cut, and the pants would have never made it there. Exactly. All right, we'll stay on the fashion here for a second for the next question. You're you're very well put together, man. You pride yourself mm. on your appearance, by the way. In your very polo, nice your Ralph Lauren. Is this cashmere? I mean, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That ain't Pima very, Cotton, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'd say that. It's very nice. <laughs> you're up there always on the list of people who best dressed on the PGA Tour. You, I mean, you even do like videos about what belt you should wear and things. It's nice, okay. But I don't really care about that. I want to know. In Billy Horschel's opinion, who is the worst dressed player on the PGA Tour? Ooh. Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. Um, a lot of options. A lot of, I can think of five of, about right now. <laughs> Live within 10 miles You know, here. anyone who wears a white belt with navy pants? Because navy, you can just wear a navy belt, and it's, it's great. It looks great. We wear a brown belt with navy, and it's fine. Oh, man, I'm trying to think. I don't want to throw anybody on No, you got to throw them over and then uh, put it in reverse and run them over again. Shoot. Back in his day when he was out there a lot, Spencer Levine took this title. Yeah, like, yeah, Spence yeah. Spence is a suspect. Kevin Stadler, I wouldn't call a sharp dresser. Tom Hoagie got to be running khaki No, Tom khaki Hoagie's not too 10. bad. He's okay. He 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 passes. I mean, he doesn't do anything special. I'm an expert right here, buddy. Yeah. Um, this is why we gosh, asked. Gosh, I mean, there there's there's people on top, like literally on the tip of my tongue. I'm trying to picture them. And and I can't. Um, da points is bad. <laughs> the, Lego the Lego belt, belt? Dude, the Lego <laughs> belt buckle. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was a joke when I first saw. It. I was like, yeah. no, this is a real belt. Buckle. I'll tell you what, I love the guy, and it's not his fault. I think it's the clothes. Is Troy Merritt? Like, I'm like, come on, bro. Literally, that is one guy yeah. I wanted to say, and I'm I didn't like, want to no, say. Like, it. I love the Troy's a I friend. He's all right. I'm like, what great. in the hell? You are know you what? Wearing? And I feel bad because a lot of stuff, and it really does come down <laughs> to the sponsor and, and the and the clothes that the, the sponsor clothes that they wear. Uh, some of the stuff that some of these sponsors, you know, create or do. I mean, God, they're just awful looking, and the way they pair them and put them in clothes. I mean, it's just yeah. it's really bad, and I feel bad. I'm like. I, I honestly couldn't walk out of my room if I had to wear some of the clothes that these guys wear. Yeah, you gotta look good to feel good. Mm-hmm. Feel good Circle. to play good. Yeah. I've always oh, been that whole way. Deal. Elkington Circle. can explain yeah. that. It, it, it's funny. The guy, uh, the one of the locker rooms in Tinda in Memphis. He's um, he's been there for years, and he's uh, it was a couple years ago. He's man, Billy, man, you you always dress good, man. I always love the way you look. You dress great. And I said, man, you know, it's just the way I am. I'm like, I'm like, so fresh, so clean. That's my song from Outcast. Yeah. So fresh, so clean. Perfect. So every time he sees me, the first day I walk in, he plays Outcast. So fresh, so clean. I like that. I like that it. should be the walkout song for you, at Zurich or Phoenix, when they trot it out. Yeah, we're see. I'm playing with Sam Burns this year as oh. my partner. Oh, get a so, little yeah. local oh. love. Yeah. Well, LSU Tigers. Smash. Yeah. Dude, I followed him on Sunday at Torrey Pines. He was in the last group. First off, I love his style. He plays super fast yep. and he smashes it. He's he's good. He hasn't put it all together yet. He will. He he's been there and you know he's played well the last couple months. Been in some final groups and and had some chances to win. He'll figure it out. But he's That's so a good. good. Team right there. I like so that. good. He's really good and I'm excited about it. I'm gonna be in New Orleans. I'll you use are. Sam Burns yeah. that week as my survivor, even though it grandfather's you in as well. <laughs> all right, next question. <laughs> I got I get two for Billy. All right, next question. Which Florida Gator do you think has a better arm? Tim Tebow or Marco Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh got cannons, gosh. bud. Cannons. God, that was awful when Marco did that. I was watching the game, and I and I saw him make the stop, and I saw him throw something. I'm like, I don't know what that is. And then and then I see the flag, and then I see it's a shoe. I'm like, you've got to be the dumbest person ever. How, loud, was, how, I, how loud did you yell at your TV? Okay, I'm trying to think where I was. That was uh, December, and I was at – Oh, I was in I was in um, 
Shark Shootout. I QBE, think. yeah. I was at QBE because yeah. I think I was on makeup game. It was our. I was. Yeah, I. I Not happy man. I don't think it was was next to me. But if they were, they would have heard me. And maybe they could have heard me down the hall. I still, was not. I was pissed. You still haven't answered the question. Uh, I'm going to say Tim Tebow. Both got cannons. Timmy T. I remember watching. I was like, there is no way LSU doesn't march down and kick a field goal to win this game. That's just ultimate. This will go down in history as one of the biggest bonehead plays. Yeah, and it was. Did. And it, it was unfortunate because I don't know. You know, when we had to play Alabama next week. And if we would have won, would yeah, that got us? Yeah, it's a total would've, different atmosphere. It would have yeah. different atmosphere. And, and we gave Alabama a good run. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it was just. It just killed a little bit of that that <laughs> atmosphere shoe. at Ooh. SEC championship. That was game. a tough one. Who yeah. throws a shoe? Who throws a shoe? Honestly, <laughs> I mean, that was crazy. It was I've never awful. seen anyone throw a shoe. I mean, he threw it thirty yards oh, down the dude, field. It was, that's what I'm saying. Thirty man. yards down that's the field. I put him I mean, up against out of his hand, guys. It was no big. It can happen to anybody. I, I would have said, dude, I was trying to throw it to the sideline, like to the you know, get it off the yeah, field. It wasn't gonna work, Billy. No, it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> All right, last question on your website, BillyHorschel.com says you met your now wife, Brittany, during junior golf, and it was love at first sight for you. But it took her a little longer to come around. Yeah. yeah. I want to know, how long did it take her to come around, and what's the craziest thing you did to try to woo her? Or I stalked the shit out of her at, at As you do. <laughs> Just throw it out there. I stalked the shit stalked out of her. the shit out of her. <laughs> I mean, literally, we were at Doral. the shit out of her. We were playing the Doral Publix, and I got there the first day. I think, you know, we had two practice whatever. I'm, I see her on the putting ground. Oh, wow, that's cool. I'm going to go putt and then literally i stalked it when she left putting green you know i i would leave too and then like if i saw her somewhere like i would literally like just start going that way even if i was going the opposite direction You're i mean on short game? it was short game. awful weird, but it's so weird i was i was my game back then was shit and, <laughs> and it's never been great let's just say that um but um she actually said the first words to me we were warming up for the final round and there, the range was really small. It's not what it is now. And you only got like 30, 20 balls to hit. And you had to hit them in like 10 minutes. So you always lined up behind the person waiting to hit. So I hit ball. I'm hitting. And then all of a sudden, I look back and she's behind me. And I go, oh, hey. And she goes, oh, I see you're a Florida Gator fan. I said, yeah, I'm also going to school there. And she goes, I am too. I'm like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And so a little mingling. And then um, we saw each other at some other um uh AJJ events she'll there's this one funny story I'll say this she'll always sell, tell me this um or bring it up there was another girl going to Florida named Mallory Blackwelder Julian mm-hmm. Trudeau's wife love Mallory. and oh, so yeah. um she was coming into Florida before Brittany and so I remember going up to Brittany at an AJJ Rolex event in, in Hilton Head at Long Cove and I, I saw her I ran up to her I'm like hey Brittany Brittany Hey, you think you could introduce me to Mallory and put in a good word in for me? Oh, and good. and she was I didn't realize this till later. She was pissed. She was so excited that I was coming up, running up to her, thinking I was gonna, you know, yeah, yeah. something special. Make no, no, jealous, no. I Billy. was so and then she came to school and we were on and off dating and everything. And so um finally around our, our middle or junior year, she she realized she realized I was I was something special. She realized how lucky she could be. Once I finished all American she, four years in a row, she knew that I was the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That I mean, maybe awesome. she knew I was wearing the FedEx Cup, and she's like, "I'm coming along." As soon for this. as I tapped in at East Lake, she said, "I no. like this fella." No, it, <laughs> no so kidding. it's been great. Um, she's uh, never been at any of my wins. She's never oh, been really? at any of my wins. Sorry, Brittany, you gotta stay home. And she knows that too. And she she actually posted something a couple weeks ago on Instagram because someone uh, she did some question or something, and she said, "I've never been at Billy's wins." Um, she's always been at home, and I whether it was with having a kids or something, and then. Um, we're both superstitious, so she doesn't fly in if I'm playing well. But I'm trying to get her to – I'm trying to play well so, so she can fly so in. I, I, would, I really want – I before the end of my career, I really want her to be at a win and all my kids to be at a win. Reverse the curse. Yeah. Yeah. So what if she's like – say she's at a tournament and you're leading – does she fly home Saturday night? No, no, no. She's Get out of town. Okay. She, no, if she's at <laughs> a tournament – Hey, beat it. I'm at winning. A tournament, she's always stayed at a tournament. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I'm not going to pull a Dustin Johnson and, and, and send home your girl – <laughs> Perfect. Winning's winning. What a way to end. I love it. Billy, Perfect. this has been a blast, my man. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Thanks, boys. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, that guys. That was awesome. And that was Billy Horschel. Sleaze, I got the – I mean, I was very lucky to play on the Walker Cup team with him and a bunch of other studs. It was an absolute blast. It was hilarious seeing him and Rory go at it. And then how about – Rory's the guy he takes down to win his FedEx Cup. Yeah, I was going to say, if uh, if Steve Stricker's listening to this right now, maybe take note. There seems to be one kryptonite for Rory McIlroy, and it's Billy Horschel. He's, he's got a hell of a track record against him. But I thought it was cool. Like, we're talking about him winning the FedEx Cup and how he won, you know, after the first week where he missed the cut, he goes, uh, he has two wins in a second mm-hmm. after that. And he was 
without question, the hottest player on the planet. Wins the FedEx Cup, beat Roy McIlroy down the stretch. But at that time, uh, Ryder Cup selections were already made. Mm -hmm. And then I think he's, I honestly think he's the reason why well, it, it's been changed yeah, because, like, Billy here's a guy, yeah. you, you want him on your team no matter what. And he didn't get to play that year. And now they're like, hey, let's move it till the end after the FedEx Cup which and pick the best player, which only makes, makes all sense. the sense in the world. So I don't know. But that's a, if you're the guy that's the reason for the rule change, it's tough to look back and be like, man, I should have been on that squad. Yeah. Hey, you're uh, winning every time you tee it up. No, you didn't play good enough early enough. We're just going to skip. You. We're going to take this guy that about yeah. 17 months ago is pretty yeah. hot. Yeah. So I'm glad they changed that rule. Billy Horschel deserved to be on that team um, for Captain Tom Watson back in the day. And hopefully he'll make it for Steve Stricker. But I mean, this guy, he's so much talent. It's a joke. He's just been a fixture on the PGA Tour. Streaky, streaky putter. He mentioned he made some ch changes to his putter before that run in the playoffs and just obviously changed his life. He only won like 13 and a half million in three weeks. Yeah, not, 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 not a bad, bad little run. run. But, man, he's such a good dude. Nice as, nice as can be. Texted him to come on. Didn't even hesitate. He said, love to. It'd be a pleasure. Came over, and, and we had a blast. We got, we, you know, we went Georgia Bulldog to Florida Gator, which is kind of yeah, interesting. We reversed it there. But, uh, but I, some love, of the questions. I love sitting down with Billy. Yeah, absolutely. And he, he's one of those guys, like we brought it up during the show, like he strikes me as one of those guys that we call, quote unquote, bulldogs. Like he, when he gets in that spot, he wants to kill you. He wants to do it, which I think is what makes the best team players in the world. And he talked about how much that Walker Cup meant to him and how much he'd love to be on one of these team things going forward. He's hovering right there. It just takes a, a couple weeks uh, with the way that things are set up this year. If he can go out there and peel something off, there's a chance we might uh, get to see him at Whistling Straits. Yep. We'll be keeping our eye on Billy Horschel, that's for sure. But Sleaze? You made quite a move this week in Let's the gambling Let's talk about picks. it. You, you, I mean, you were over. You were shut mm -hmm. out. You had zero dollars in the bank account, and you went out on a limb. You took, I mean, one of the favorites just to get in there. The only problem is, but good for you, he's, he played well. But the only problem is now he's done for the he, rest of the year. He's the guy I pick pretty much every week <laughs> yeah. on every show we do, but I had to get out of the. That's my slump buster right there. I said last week, I was like, if Xander doesn't play good this week, like I, there's something there. So seeing him up there, I mean, legitimately on Sunday, I was like, he's the guy to beat. I know just our Jordan's right there. The way he was driving it all week, I thought for sure this was Xander's to win. But you get a second place out of him. You'll it's hard it. to do a whole lot better than that. I'm off the schneid now, yep. so we can put it all to bed. And my guy, Hideki Matsuyama, didn't have his normal week around Waste Management Phoenix Open, but still made me a check. I still think it's a very, very close close race. But producer Mark, what do we got? Yeah, so as you guys said, Xander tied for second, $649,000. And that will give Drew the lead as Hideki Matsuyama's oh. T42 was good for 23,853, giving Drew the lead of $131,000. Perfect. Obviously, this thing can turn quick. Yeah. I mean, if he pars 18, I still oh. got the lead. I was out there walking yeah. on 18 fairways for Burr. I was like, this, is big. this putt doesn't matter for a tournament. This yeah. is a big putt. This is a big money putt All for right. the show. Well, that means you have the honor this week. We got the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, which I will be at yes. all week covering for Golf Channel and CBS. Do the honors, my All man. Right. Who are you going with? This week at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. I guess it even called Pro-Am this year since there's no pro since there's AT no AT&T Pebble Beach Pro. All right, the Pro. The, the, yeah, AT&T Pebble Beach Pro. I'm sticking with my strategy. It worked last week. I just went with a guy that pretty much never finished out of the top five. Worked out pretty well. I'm going no research again this week. I'm going to go with Will Zalatoris, and I got two things written down for him, and I just only know it because it's off the top of my head. He top 10 at Torrey, and he top 20 this past week in Phoenix. Young kid, hits the ball really good, and uh, I'll ride a hot hand when I can get it. This field, there's some big name guys up at the very top, but I just don't want to burn them. DJ's three and a half on my book, three and a half to wow. one to win this week. So I don't want to I don't want to use one of the biggest big dogs. He and Cantlay are up there at the top, but I'll go Will Zally. Yeah, Will Zalatoris just moved in the top 50 in the world, by the way. It's moving quick, too. Yeah. All right, I'm going with a guy who has – Played terrible as of late. Perfect. I yep, love that terrible. strategy. So, I mean, Brooks Kepka missed three straight cuts and won. You never so, know. So, this guy is a machine around Pebble Beach. He's never won here, but he top tens it every single year that I think that he's played it, I believe. In the last three years, he's gone fourth, fourth, and second. Jason Day. Not terrible. Not I mean, terrible. So At some point, Jason Day is going to turn it around. It's got to. I watched him for a few holes this week in the practice round. He was playing with a great group. He had Rom. Uh, Jason Day, Jordan Spieth, and Jason Duffner. And I watched them for a few holes, just kind of walked around and talked for a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. Yeah. I tell you what, if you're going to pinpoint something, I couldn't find it. But uh, I like that strategy. Right. Guys playing like shit, but plays good there. Yeah. That's what I did with Charles Howe. Didn't quite work for me. Maybe it'll work for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. we got a long ways to go, but it's going to be fun out at Pebble Beach. We're going to throw a couple dark horse picks at you. Yes, sir. I'll tell you mine, and I'm going to keep picking this guy until he shows up because <laughs> eventually it's going to happen. But another guy who's played really well at Pebble, you know, he's a NorCal kid, finished 14th last year, 10th the year before. I just feel like he's trending. We play a lot of golf with him, and every time we play with him, I'm like, holy shit, this guy's going to win 
a bunch of times this year. Max Homa. There you go. Going off at 15 to 1. Yeah, and he was actually, you know, he didn't have his best week at Phoenix Open, but a couple bad shots. Mm -hmm. There was one hole giving him a big time problem on uh, uh, 14. He had some tough drives out there. But yeah, every time we play with him, I'm like, well, I'm picking you this week. So, all right, there you go. I'm going to go with the guy. For my long shot, he's 66 to 1 on my book. He's a West Coast specialist. His last four events, he's, he's been fourth at the Sony, 21st at the Amex, 30th at the Phoenix Open. Solid, nothing spectacular after Sony, but like I said, does a ton of damage on the West Coast, specifically at Safeway, which is right down the road from Pebble Beach. Brendan Steele, 66 to 1. Steele, when he finds a place he likes, he normally plays well. Exactly. Keep him in NorCal, and I like his chances. I'll go Brendan Steele as my long shot at 66 to 1. All right, well, best of luck to everyone. We got another monster coming your way next week. You are not going to want to miss it. We're USA guys, Team USA all the way. But we got the captain of the European Ryder Cup team, Podrick Harrington, in the building, and it was an absolute blast. You are not going to want to miss it. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on next week's Golf Subpar. <laughs>